What's going on guys? This is Jacob here. Today I wanted to make a little bit of a different video, how to actually be a good coder. And um, you know, a lot of my, uh, I know a lot of you viewers are coders, are programmers, and I wanted to talk about kind of my experience, how I uh, kind of learned over time. You know, I still feel like I'm not a great coder. I still feel like I suck, but every day I'm learning and I love the process. And I wanted to kind of share that process with you on how to be a good coder. Um, at the end of the day, the more time you spend doing something, the better you're gonna be. I've been doing this for about eight years, and you know, I still feel like I'm not perfect, but I'm definitely better than when I started on the first year. So at the end of the day, the more time you put into it, you will be better, but it goes a little bit more than that. There's a bit more to that than just, all right, put in your 10,000 hours and you'll be a master. Um, and I wanted to talk about those things that it actually takes. So number one, you need to learn from your mistakes. It's absolutely okay to make mistakes, and I've made a ton of mistakes programming. I mean, I make mistakes still to this day, every day. Uh, I, I add something and a new bug happens, but what's crucial is learning from that mistake. You know, make it the first time, that's okay, but really analyze it and say, okay, how can I fix this? How can I make it better for next time? That's gonna lead to that. That's gonna lead to you getting better, right? And, and you know, being able to write code that has a less chance of having bugs or errors or crashes. That's your goal. You wanna minimize that chance as much as possible. That way you can release new features and new software solutions without much you know, friction. So I'd say that number one is the, one of the most important things is to really learn from your mistakes. And the only way to do that is to try, is to build projects, is to um, you know, either uh, obviously if you have a job or you're starting a company, you know, doing, actually doing an, an action will, will make you better, you know? Um, so instead of, you know, trying to, you know, always watch other people or learn online, like that's great. That's a great start, but you have to do, you have to make stuff and, and learn from that. And, and you'll find that the more projects you do and the more real life experience you have, you will become a better coder. So that would be my first thing, you know, really learn from your mistakes. Like I said, it's okay to make mistakes, but make sure, make sure you learn from them. Okay. Number two, I think also you need to be passionate about uh, the subject matter, right? You can be passionate about coding, right? I am, I'd say I'm passionate about coding, but also there's kind of like a secondary step of, okay, you're passionate about coding, but I'm sure there's a niche that you're a bit more passionate about, right? Could be gaming. Maybe you're passionate about coding, but you all, you're a little bit more passionate about gaming and you want to create your own video game or, or a mobile app. Um, that secondary passion will really excel your your process and, and you getting better because when you're passionate about something you're uh, you're willing to put more risk and more time into it to figure it out right so i'm really passionate about a lot of things um obviously finance being one of them with all my stock trading bot videos um you know video games for sure i've always been passionate about video games and you know to this day i still would like to re release my own commercial video game one day but you know, being passionate about the subjects has allowed me to excel. I remember my first um, app that I made um, back in high school. Was, I think it was a year after I graduated high school. I was really big into this game called RuneScape, which is a, an online RPG game. And, you know, I, I think it was Christmas break. And I was like, I want to build something related to this, right? And I ended up building this simple menu to show prices for items in that game RuneScape. But you know, starting that, you know, saying that in my mind saying, okay, I need to get this done. I, I'm, I'm really passionate about RuneScape. What can I do? And I really set my mind to, okay, I'm going to make this right. And over the Christmas break, over the two weeks, I ended up completing the app. Um, it was crap. It wasn't that great. It was really poorly written and really ugly. But at the end of the day, I completed it. And the only reason why I completed it was because I was passionate, right? Like I liked RuneScape and I wanted to build something for it and it allowed me to complete it. And I learned, you know, going back to, to tip number one, I learned so much from completing that project, you know, how to properly comment, how to write a bit more efficient. And I learned a lot from that project. So I think, you know, tip number two would be, you know, you need to be passionate, right? And it, you don't need to be passionate about coding, but you need to be passionate about some type of topic and create a something around that, some type of software around that. So like I said, it could be video games, it could be healthcare, it could be uh, stocks and, and you know, uh, finance. Um, when you're passionate about that niche topic, like I said, you're, you're willing to put more risk and more time into it because you enjoy it. And that's how you're going to grow 
and, and, and really love the process. When you're not passionate about it, say you like coding, but you're working on something you don't really like, like say web design or um, maybe a field you're just not interested in, you know, you're not, you might learn a little bit, but because you're not passionate, you're not willing to take risks to put more time into it. And it's just going to, you know, be somewhat of a waste of time. So anyways, yeah, tip number two, in summary, be passionate about a secondary topic and, and, and create a solution for that. And, and you'll find you'll, you'll make a much better product in the end, uh, for sure. So tip number three, I think the last one is really understanding, uh, users, understand how people are going to use your, your service or your app or, or your website. Um, you know, and, and that comes from, you know, talking to them, talking to people. Um, when you're coding, you know, any type of project or solution, you always need to be, you need to have the, you know, the, the mind of a developer saying, all right, I need to write clean, efficient code. And I need to comment my code. I need to be able to interact with my team members very well, but also, you know, the customer or the user and, and trying to get in their shoes and say, all right, how are they going to use this app? What features are going to be useful? How can I make it easier to use? You really need to get in their head. And the only way to do that, to actually do that is to talk to people, you know, and not even just friends and family that, you know, are biased towards your app, but, you know, people on the street or, or you know, somehow grabbing, um, you know, user groups to talk to, um, it will allow you to become an amazing coder because, you know, writing clean code is great, but also at the end of the day, your end product needs to be useful and, and people need to like it. Um, and understanding users is, is one of the, the biggest um, factors when it comes to being a good coder because at the end of the day they're going to be using your product and they don't care about your code they're, they're, they're never going to see it you know they don't even know it exists they just see a screen or you know an app and and buttons you know that's all they see so that end product needs to be um you know useful for them so i think you know like i said understanding them getting them into their shoes and the only way to do that is to actually talking to people and and watching them watching someone use your app, you know, click the buttons or use your website and move the mouse, you know, recording all those movements and watching how they interact will allow you to to make those, um, you know, new features or bug fixes that they're going to like, because sometimes maybe they'll tell you directly saying like, okay, I wish this was a certain color, or I wish this did that. That's great. But sometimes uh, a user or customer doesn't know what to say. But by watching how they interact with the whatever device you've created that solution for, um, you know, it allows you to kind of tune it a little bit and, and you notice that. And I think even though that's not really writing code, I think, you know, understanding users is a crucial process when it comes to becoming a, a good coder, um, at the end, at the end of the day, just because like, you know, they're using your product. If you're simply writing code and not interacting with users or customers at all, I don't think that I wouldn't define that as being a good coder. You're good at writing code, but I think there's a lot more when it comes to um, software as a whole. And, and maybe you call it like being good at you know engineering or software developer, whatever it may be. But um, I think it's it's really important to understand um, how people interact with your app. So I would say that was tip number three. Um, I'll do one more. I guess tip number four from my experience, what I've learned is um, definitely you need to keep things simple, especially if you're team size is small. Um, I s definitely learned that when starting my own business, um, that I, I, I tried to, to do too many things. I tried to code too many new features, too complex things, and it does slow you down in the end. And, so, and most more often than not, it's not really worth the time trying to do all these complex features and, and, um, you know, cool new features all the time it will slow you down because sometimes or more often than not, they're not used. You know, you might have this be on this, you know, hype train that, you know, users need all these new features. They need cool effects and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, by not, ta not talking to your customers, uh, they, they might not even use it. You might spend, you know, a month or two months adding all these cool new things and then, you know, they might not use it. So, I think it's important to keep things simple. And when it comes to the nitty gritty of actually writing code, definitely, you know, you want to simplify code as much as possible um, and not not take the shortcut and, and you know, 
say you might know how to how to do something and it's really complex to do well finding a shorter way of doing it while writing actual less lines of code um, is more beneficial because it's easier uh, to read and it's easier for your colleagues or uh, you know your coworkers to read and, and work with you and work more efficiently I think that's really important is keeping things simple when writing code um, and, and you know, at the end of the day, writing less code, if possible, if you can, it does help and it does go a long way. And when you, you know, when I first started out, I did a lot of, you know, complex code that I, I probably could have made it shorter. I probably could have done it a different way that was less lines of code and easier to read. I just got it working, right? And and that's what I felt like my first, you know, two, three years of coding were uh, back after high school and in college was, all right, just get it to work, you know, get it to work. It doesn't matter how you do it, just get it to work. And, and more often than not, that was fine, but um, it definitely creeped up on on me and, and on my coworkers when things were a little bit too complex and we had to rewrite them. Thus, we had to spend more time to rewrite them. So I've learned, you know, try and keep things simple. Less lines of codes, the better. Try and reuse uh, other code, you know, try and reuse functions or classes as much as possible. You don't want to have to... Um, write new code for each new feature you know try and reuse some for sure but yeah keeping things simple is really important and will will definitely speed up the process of developing new features and product and and projects when it comes to software development so um yeah keep things simple that's all i can say so anyways yeah that's pretty much all i had i mean there's a lot more tips i could go into really really nitty gritty but those four things i think were really important important in and setting up me for success to, to being a real coder, you know, like I said, at the end of the day, the more time you spend into it, on average, you're going to be better, right? Um, the more time, you know, you put into anything in the world, you're going to be better. And if you're really passionate about coding and, and, and software, you will put in the time you will enjoy it. And I enjoy it every day. I enjoy creating uh, new solutions and, and new features and even fixing bugs. Sometimes I enjoy that. And if you enjoy that and share that same passion with me, uh, well, leave a comment below if you do. Um, I know, I like I said, I post a lot of content when it comes to, you know, trading bots and stuff like that. But if you're, you know, a web developer, mobile app developer, anything with software, leave a comment below. I like to know. But um, yeah, the, the more time you put into it, you will be better and, and you will get better and, and people will see that. And, um, you know, there, there's many, many different, definitions of being a good coder um maybe mine aren't correct but this is just from my personal experience and and what i think um some other people might have different definitions and that's that's fine i think at the end of the day you know if you're able to create software that's useful you're a good coder you know and it doesn't have to be using the the newest technology or the newest language like it could be something old and that's fine as long as it works and people like it and and they're happy with it I think that's all that matters in the end and it doesn't matter um to the nitty-gritty you know actual actual code per se it's just you know at the end of the day you're creating a product for someone right and if they find it useful and it makes them smile or saves them time that that makes me happy at least and most times it you know should make you happy if you're you know a software developer as well so anyways i felt like this was a rant um i just wanted to to make a video on this i i I don't know. I just, it popped in my head today and I was like, I'm going to make a video on how to be a good coder. So anyways, I hope you found value in this video. Um, leave a comment below if you're a coder or programmer and um, let me know what video you want me to make next. I have no idea what video I want to make next. I'm kind of running short on ideas and I have to really, you know, brainstorm a little bit because yeah, I'm definitely, you know, short for ideas. So let me know in the comments below and I hope you found value in this video. I will see you in the next one. See you guys.